Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it's a little bit something different. It's a collection video. Uh, specifically my Fangoria collection so far. Now Fangoria is a magazine that first uh, came on the newsstands I believe in like 1979 and it became synonymous with horror and it was ultimately the ultimate horror magazine for many years. A lot of horror fans when the magazine was in its heyday and in its prime and you could buy it on the newsstands are very familiar with Fangoria and my history with Fangoria is not the same as other fans of Fangoria um, but it doesn't mean that I'm I'm not a really big fan of Fangoria. I love Fangoria. It's easily the best horror magazine that has ever been published. And it also, in some ways, is somewhat responsible for my love of horror. So, because of that, it holds a very special place in my heart. Now, Fangoria magazines were something that I didn't really get a hold of or had access to when I was a kid but I knew about them through my Starlog magazines see horror was like a for forbidden fruit for me growing up my parents didn't want me to have anything to do with horror and the closest I got to watching or consuming anything horror related would be tame horror stuff like the Monster Squad, or the Universal Monsters movies from the 30s and 40s, or stuff like that. You know that that's that's really or Beetlejuice. <laughs> I mean that 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 was really my main exposure to horror. But once I got a taste of it, once I saw Creep Show, which was the first horror film I, I ever saw. I really got hooked and then I discovered uh, and then I watched films like The Thing, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing and and Leviathan and and um, Nightmare on Elm Street films and Friday the 13th and Tales from the Crypt, which is my favorite show of all time. And a lot of this was born from just this really I'm trying to think of the right word for it. This growing interest in the genre that started with little bits and pieces that I would see in Starlog magazines. And I still have a, quite a bit of Starlog magazines as well. And and I, I have a, a soft uh, spot and for, for Starlog as well. They, they hold, they hold a special place in my heart too, because, um, I really I like a lot of sci-fi films and a lot of sci-fi stuff and Starlog was really my first glimpse into a movie magazine. So I, I love Starlog. If I had to pick between the two, I would probably say I like Fangoria more now, but that's because I'm just a, a bigger fan of horror than I really am of any other film genre. And when I'm talking about how Fangoria is somewhat responsible for my love of the genre, it comes down to this specific book. The 101 Best Horror Movies You've Ever Seen by Fangoria. Now, this I was able to get my hands on, some, on this, but not the issues, um, because... My dad actually bought this for me, I believe, at Borders when there was still a Borders around in uh, Portland, in Oregon. And I, I wanted a copy of this because I had checked it out at the library when I was with my dad uh, in one of the various different places he was living when I was, uh, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, I was a preteen. And I was really fascinated with this book. First off, the, the cover really grabbed me. 
And then I, I read it and I was like, wow, I've never heard of any, I've never heard of these movies. And these all look really interesting and really cool to me. And they, and that's how I first heard about films like the Blob remake and The Keep and films like Brain Damage and Death Machine, <clears throat> Dolls, Event Horizon, Exorcist 3, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, um, The Night Flyer, Night of the Comets, Prison. These are, this is how I, Screamers, it, so on and so forth. I mean, this is, I really, really love this, this book. I read it cover to cover and I really liked it. And I wanted to try to track down and watch every single film in here. And, and honestly, I still haven't, as much as I love this genre, I still haven't actually watched every film that's in this book. But I will say this, this is a really nice uh, book in terms of just, just kind of a, let's just say a beginner's guide to horror in some ways. It, it's, it's really light reading, but there's enough here that really can catch your interest if you're not really that knowledgeable about the genre. And there's a lot of film, different types of films that are in here as well. And one of these days, I would love to do the actually redo and finish the series of reviews I was trying to do uh, based on this book, based on all of the films that were featured in this book. Um, but yeah, when I first laid my eyes on this book, I was just like, this is really cool. And these movies sound really interesting to me. I want to see these movies. I want to see more of these types of films. And... The little bits of trivia in here was is, is was fun too, but yeah, it's it's not a very meaty book by any means, but it really does hold a very special place in my heart because of what it ultimately did for me. It completely broke open this new world of horror, and I will always be forever grateful. For this book for doing that and if you're a fangoria fan if you if you can find this for cheap it's worth it because you know it's 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 a pretty nice uh this is a pretty well put together book for the most part and one of the editors a couple of the a couple of the people actually who work on fangoria work uh, did the book so yeah it's definitely uh worth it if you're a fan of the magazine now there was another book and there was there's another one after the, and there's another one that's out there too that I think it's just like Fangoria covers but and I think there might have been another one but I don't know for sure I think this might have been the only other Fangoria book I didn't know about this until fairly recently when I got this at Powell's in downtown Portland um, this is a fun book as well um, Basically what this is, is kind of a history of horror and a mix of different articles from the magazine. So it, it, it's acts as kind of a introductory course to horror, as well as an introduction to Fangoria. So this is a really cool book in terms of like, just getting a, a nice taste of what Fangoria has to offer. Plus a little bit of a, a, a small history of, of the horror genre. Um, but a lot of it is mainly just a smattering of different Fangoria articles. And they're not, not as... I gotta be honest. I mean, there's a lot of cool pictures in here. But the articles, they're not as eye-catching as they are in the actual magazine. But, um, yeah, this is something I picked up fairly recently, like, like a year ago or something. But it's something I definitely wanted to get my hands on because, I'm, like I said, I'm a big fan of Fangoria. And this is a nice companion piece to the magazines. Now, 
There is, like I said, there's the cover to cover one, but it's just the covers. And I've never really been a fan of those types of books. Like, what's really the point? It seems really pointless to, to make a book that's just a compilation of nothing but covers of magazines or comic books. Um, but that's just me personally. Uh, it's kind of like how I feel about these Fangoria trading cards. Uh, I didn't pay anything for these, though. So... It, it was it was still a, a welcome surprise because I had no idea these were even a thing. Uh, these were in a box of trading random uh, trading cards uh, from various different things. Uh, Xena Warrior Princess, um, Bill and Ted, Hellraiser. Yeah, the Hellraiser cards though were really cool, and it was a box that was just given to me by one of my relatives after it was actually a surprise gift because I had left to go visit my dad in Michigan and when I came home there was this box of cards waiting for me and in that box I found Fangoria trading cards now these really are I mean they're, they're not, not really there's not really that much to these they're they're just the covers of Fangoria magazines that are put into like small card form and forgive me i mean it's it's, it's not uh, up close the, the zoom isn't the best because this webcam really doesn't have a very good zoom um but the the, the picture quality on them isn't really that much much different um but it's cool to have as in terms of like just for collecting collectors purposes and there's some fun little anecdotes on the back from uh, quotes from different uh, horror filmmakers and actors and so on and so forth so it's it's a fun um, collectors piece to have and a nice little bit of Fangoria memorabilia but it's not really anything special or spectacular so um, Definitely, when you when you compare these trading cards to like the actual magazine, like it's it's no contest. The magazine is much better, and including both of the books, but it's still a really nice. It's a, it's still, a, I would I still think it's pretty cool, because it's you know it's Fangoria trading cards, and you know I just I, I'm a big fan of Fangoria, and so I just think that's a really cool little, uh, slice of. Fangoria fun, so to speak. Um, now we're getting to the actual magazines. I'm not going to really do much other than just show you the magazines. I'm not going to open them up or take them out of the plastic, the ones that are in the plastic. And I just, I, I'm just going to show you the magazines. I'm going to show you the goods. Uh, most of my magazines are actually from the 80s and the 90s. Some of them are from the 2000s, but most of them are from that particular decade, which I consider to be the glory days of horror, or how I like to call it, actually, the gory days. I, I, I consider those to be the gory days of horror. And Fangoria is a magazine, like I said, I always wanted to have, but I never was able to get it because my parents were like, no, you can't have horror stuff. And I even remember one time when I went to a comic book shop, it was my parents, and I found a Fangoria magazine. And it was actually not that expensive at all. And it, I believe it was the issue that talked about Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. And they, my, I was like trying to get my mom to get it for me. I was like begging her, I was like, "Come on, it's 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 Freddy. I like Freddy Krueger. This is cool, and then I want it." And the mom's like, "No," and I still don't have that issue, by the way. Um, but it's one of those things where I was just, I just, I always thought it was kind of fun, kind of funny, that um, that was like. My first inter the first time I ever actually saw a Fangoria magazine, and I couldn't have it then, and so that that kind of is another reason why I'm I'm trying to get all the Fangoria magazines that I wanted to get my hands on because I wasn't able to do that when I, when I was a kid. 
and I wasn't able to do that for a long time because I couldn't find any in the wild and I still haven't really found any in the wild. The, the only Fangoria magazine that I found in the wild isn't even technically a Fangoria magazine. It's a movie tie-in. I found the Freddy's Dead official movie magazine at a Goodwill and my dad got it for me. And I believe it's a Goodwill in downtown Portland, which used to have so much awesome shit. That Goodwill was amazing. It was a treasure trove of awesomeness. It had just a really giant film and television section. It had racks upon racks of VHS tapes for really good prices. Um, it's one of those things where... Oh man, I miss that Goodwill so much. It's still around, but it's not the same Goodwill. It doesn't have the same stacks and rows of tapes. It doesn't have the same selection of books. It doesn't have the same selection of magazines and comics. It's just not the same period. Uh, it's the one that was on Grand. That's on, that's on Grand. It's not was. It is on Grand in downtown Portland. Folks who uh, who know of Portland will will know of that goodwill for sure so anyway yeah he got me Freddy's dead and I, I I have that still it's it's just in a buried in a in a tote on top of other totes and I and it's I just really would be a pain in the ass to get it out right now so I decided not to but trust me I do still have it and I really like that magazine and I hadn't actually even seen Freddy's Dead yet when I got that magazine. I, I think it even had like some 3D glasses in it. Um, so it was it was a it was a fun, fun uh, little uh, magazine. And the reason why it ties into to Fangoria is the fact that it's actually a Fangoria produced tie-in. They, they, the people at Fangoria worked on it and put it together. And it even had a poster in it that I put on my wall uh, back when I was living with my grandparents and my mom in uh, Tigard, Oregon. Really, our address says Portland, but we're basically in Tigard. Because Tigard was literally within walking distance uh, of my house. And I had that on the wall, and I'd actually printed off a ton of different Freddy photos, and I'd pinned them on my wall when, when uh, pretty soon, I mean, yeah, I'd pinned them on, sorry, it's just, it, it happened, it's been so long ago, it takes me a little bit to recollect. So, yeah, I pinned them on my wall and put the poster up. Because I was just really big into Nightmare on Elm Street. I had seen the entire franchise, the entire series, over a uh, three-day weekend. And I, I really liked the franchise, and I was really into it. And and that was when I was pretty soon after I graduated. So I was like 19 or 20. And I had put them up on the wall. And they were still up there when I left to uh, move in with my dad in Oklahoma City. And I know my mom really wasn't that happy about the that Red Elm Street stuff, but didn't matter because she just kind of let it go, let it slide. Because at that point, I was I was an adult, so couldn't really technically prevent me from from really uh, embracing my love of horror at that point. So yeah, I didn't end up getting any Fangoria magazines other than the Freddy's Dead official movie magazine. Until lately, until uh, the past uh, couple years or so, where I got a whole just absolute slew of them in a trade with a good friend of mine named Shonda. I traded her a, a spare Laserdisc player that I had and a bunch of Laserdiscs for a bunch of Fangoria magazines. And I still think it was a great trade from a really great gal. <laughs> I mean... I met her at the screening of the Monster Squad at the Hollywood Theater, and her and I chatted and shared a love for the genre, and then we actually did meet up a couple times, like not a date or anything, but, you know, we're just hanging out, 
and I saw her at another screening, and she actually let me in on uh, the details of the horror convention that was in downtown Portland in Oregon, and I was able, through her, to volunteer for it, and it's still one of my best memories that I can think of. I loved working for it. I, that was a really great experience. And it was the first horror convention in downtown. Uh, actually, it was the first horror convention period in Oregon. And it was sadly also the last. Like, it's, it's, there were some things that happened that some vendors weren't too happy or whatever with the end result and so on and so forth. I don't know. But it was still a really great thing to be a part of. And I would totally do it again if the, if anyone that was involved with it decided to start it up again. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would have never have had the opportunity to be a part of that if it wasn't for, for Shonda. And um, so, yeah, I, I can't sing. I, I can't say enough good things about her, to be honest. <laughs> um, and then I ended up... Uh, getting a really good deal from her for all these Fangoria magazines. And other than the trade that I did with Shonda, I ended up getting some through Facebook groups and a uh, couple as some gifts and stuff like that. So that's really how I have built my collection so, so far, which is, is, is actually pretty decent. Uh, and I'm trying to get as many Fangoria magazines as I possibly can because Years ago, the warehouse that had the pretty much complete overstock of back issues for Fangorian Starlog, it burned down. So ever since that, whatever issues that were available that collectors had or, or fans had, those were the only ones that were in circulation or available for for purchase and because of that there's limited quantities especially with the older issues and as the years go by I'm pretty sure that these magazines are just gonna go up in price because they're gonna be even harder to find yes there are scans you can get the entire run online or on a CD, or on CD, really on, not CD, on CDs for a decent price, or get them for free through torrents and other places, but it's just not the same. And I, I'm grateful for the scans, that's how I'm able to actually read some really rare issues, but, and be able to, you know, check them out on my computer for research purposes, because it's a lot easier to do that. Uh, than to dig out one of my issues. But it's absolutely not the same because you don't have the tangible quality to it. You you can't really touch those, those scans. It, it's just not even remotely close to being the same as actually reading the physical magazine. So enough, enough uh, dilly-dallying, <laughs> enough uh, jerking you around. Um, I'm going to get to actually showing you my Fangoria magazines that I've collected so far. So here we have, uh, I think this is like one of the early, yeah, this is number 16. This issue is older than I am. This is the one that deals with ghost story and, uh, Dick Smith's really just amazing effects in that, in that film. Then we have issue, I believe this is, yeah, this is number 28, Spasms, as well as uh, The Deadly Spawn and um, a few other things. So that's issue number 28. I don't have them in order right now. They're just kind of all over the place. Issue number 51 talks about House, as well as stuff like Mutant Hunt, Tales from the Dark Side, the TV series. Number 20 with the Creep Show cover with E.G. Marshall from the They're Creeping Up on You segment. 
This is issue number, I believe this is the one. I'm trying to figure it's a number, yeah, number 56. I've been, ever since I saw this, I have been wanting to get my hands on this one for the longest time, and I finally have it now. Uh, it's the, it's, I mean, Maxim Overdrive. I mean, I love that movie. So I definitely wanted to get my hands on that. And this is, this, this, this ad right here, I saw all the time in the Starlog magazines I had, um, that I still have when I was a kid. Um, so wrong English there, uh, my bad, but yeah, this ad was in the Starlog magazines all over the place that I looked at when I was young and that was my first introduction to Fangoria and I was always like, man, I really, that looks really cool. I want some Fangoria magazines and now I have a whole bunch of them. Then we have the issue with Chucky uh, from Child's Play 2. I believe this is issue... This is issue number 98. Then we have issue number 69 with uh, Freddy, Prince of Darkness. So talks about Pumpkinhead. These are all the most recent ones that I actually got um, from a Facebook seller. This is issue number 92. Talks about Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Stuff like this is the closest you're going to get to like behind the scenes on a film like Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Because it has some special features. I, and it's not even on Blu-ray yet, if I remember correctly. Which is kind of lame. Then this is issue number 95. It's got Total Recall and Dark Man. There's also Robocop 2. There's a little bit that talks about Robocop 2 in there. This is uh, number 146. It talks about Screamers. It even has an ad for the shitty Pumpkinhead Blood Wings game on the back. <laughs> it's another thing really cool about really fun about old magazines is just looking at the the old advertisements this uh, this is um, the one that deals with Evil Dead 2 and this is issue number 63 also talks about my demon lover among other stuff too this is issue number 83 that's about Friday the 13th and the terror within this is a double I believe I think I do have I think I have another one of those I have some doubles because they kind of came with some lots that I got this is uh, the issue that talks about Rawhead Rex as well as a few other things as usual no, this is issue number 61 mainly wanted this because it has a has a article that talks about the kindred this is the nightmare uh, on Elm Street 5 issue which is number why doesn't it tell me what issue it is normally they tell you what issue it is like right on the inside of the 85 this is issue 85 this isn't the one that that um, I first saw that's for sure I, I wanted this one though because it actually talks about blood salvage which I think is a really underrated movie that nobody talks about and it's got Freddy on the cover I like Freddy this one talks about Amityville 3D, as well as Pieces, and Twilight Zone, and The Keep. This is number 31. This is the uh, Fangoria Best and Bloodiest Horror, Horror Video magazine. It's kind of a spinoff. Has an ad for some horror t-shirts on the back. 
there's basically a lot of just reviews, kind of overview of, of different horror stuff, horror films with some photos and so on and so forth. It's a, it's a fun collector's piece. That's a great cover too. This is number 10. What about scanners? I think that might be the oldest one I have. This is number 81. Talks about The Fly 2 as well as Horror Show and Freddy's Nightmares. This is one of the free issues that I think the guy threw in there this is one of the later issues this is like number 302 it talks about insidious I don't really care that much about I really don't care that much about these uh, issues from the 2000s and I, I guess they are apparently like some of them are like really hard to find but I don't really care I'm definitely more into the 80s and 90s ones like this Number issue issue number thirty three that talks about the keep. Great photo, great picture of Molasar on the on the on the front there. So it talks about the power. Strange invaders. This is number one forty eight. Empire in Brooklyn, yeah, but there's some other good stuff in here. It talks about Castle Freak. Number 18, Cat People, Creep Show, The Thing, The Beast Within. This is, I believe this is like a later, this is the one that, this one talks about the blob as well as a few others. This is, for, this is issue number 76. Talks about uh, the blob remake, Phantasm 2. Fright Night, Part 2, Nightmare 4. It's a lovely sound, I know. Sorry about that. Number 118. Bram Stoker's Dracula, Candyman, Doctor Giggles. As a as an as an advertisement for Full Moon's videos on the back there. This is number twenty four. It's got extra on the front as well as. Um, some stuff about Q and like I was saying yep I do have this issue a double of this particular issue as well as this one but in in the lot with the screamers one he just threw that in for free so I didn't pay anything extra for it this is number 106 talks about cast a deadly spell body parts child's play 3 Speaking of body parts, here's issue number 105 that has the body parts cover. This is issue number 26, talks about Amityville 2, Dick Smith's effects for the hunger. We have issue... I believe this is another one of those issues from like this. I think it's like this. Yeah, it talks about Critters too. So this is like, yeah, this is in the 70s. So this is issue number 74. Talks about the unholy. I really wanted this one because it talks about the unholy and I like that film. And I, and I also like, of course, Critters too, which is a lot of fun. But... Before the Vestron Collector Series uh, Blu-ray, there really was nothing out there that talked about the making of the film or any sort of bits about the behind the scenes other than it 
issues like this. This one is number, this is an older one, because it talks about from beyond. Yeah, this is number 59. Sorry, I don't know the issues by numbers by heart. This is 59, which uh, talks about the fly, from beyond, trick or treat, tales from the dark side. So number 115, Army of Darkness, Pet Cemetery 2, Brain Dead, Alien 3. Number 108 with People Under the Stairs, Freddy's Dead, Waxwork 2. This is number 78, Hellraiser 2, cool pinhead cover, so talks about Nightmare 4, the Blob remake, Waxwork. This is number 303. I wanted this because, well, it's a special John Carpenter issue. I'm not really a big fan of the later runs of Fangoria, but I'm a huge fan of John Carpenter, so uh, I definitely want to get my hands on this issue. I also have the John Carpenter issue of Horror Hound, or, or is it Rue Morgue? It's one of them. This is the one of the horror spectaculars Fangoria did, I think from the early 90s. That's about Predator 2. It's got a Tales from the Crypt episode guide. This is from 91, I believe. It's got some cool posters in it as well. Maybe they wanted it, of course, because it's got the Crypt Keeper. This is the, this is, uh, the uh, Fangoria issue with the Crypt Keeper cover. You know how I am with Tales from the Crypt. This is another issue, I believe, in the 70s, I think. In terms of the run, yeah, 75. Late 80s. 88. Let's see, a Phantasm 2, Hellraiser 2, Child's Play, Ghost Town. This is number 97. About Romero's Night of the Living Dead remake, Scanners 2, Dark Man, Child's Play 2. I really like the the bright orange on this. I just think it's a really great looking cover in terms of the color. This is issue number 129. Actually talks about Full Eclipse. And Full Eclipse actually got the cover. Yeah, and it's a werewolf issue. Yeah, it's complete history of werewolf films and books is in this one. These are, yeah, this is another later issue, 244. This came with the trade. Still totally worth it, despite my just meh feelings on the later, you know, issues. This one talks about Jeepers Creepers. I think this, this is a special issue, number 206. This one actually talks about Italian horror, so that might be pretty, pretty a pretty good piece in that one. This is, uh, I believe this is another issue from, it's definitely another issue from the late 80s. It's number 82. Because it talks about Return of the Swamp Thing, The Fly 2, Leviathan, and Nightlife. Which still is not on Blu-ray or even DVD. But it has the, fr the cover on this issue of Fangoria. This one talks about Robert England's Family Opera, and it's number 87. Now, what I kind of find funny about this particular issue is that it had, when you open up the issue, 
That has an ad for Phantom, the, Phantom of the Mall. <laughs> it talks about Phantom of the Opera, and then it has an ad for Phantom of the Mall. It also talks about Shocker. I actually really like uh, England's uh, Phantom of the Opera. This is issue number 112. talks about Hellraiser 3, Resurrected, Sleepwalkers, The Vagrant. This is issue number 96 with the Darkman cover. Love this cover. Love that movie. It's great. Also talks about Arachnophobia. A Maniac Cop 2. This is from, I think, 87? Yeah, this is number 71. It's either 87 or... This, this is 88, actually, because it talks about Poltergeist 3. But it also talks about deep space. You can see an actual picture of the alien there. Cellar dwellers on the cover. Talks about, has a little preview of Surfing the Rainbow. This is number 72. It's got the Bad Dreams cover. Also talks about Maniac Cop. Brain Damage, Slaughterhouse Rock, Poltergeist 3. Looking through these, honestly, is just making me want to just spend a whole day just reading Fangoria magazines. Just chilling and just checking out Fango. Number 110, Hellraiser 3, Split Second. Number 122, Warlock sequel, The Dark Half, and Warlock the Armageddon, Subspecies 2. Update on uh, Jason Goes to Hell. Oh. Even actually says what the issue is. This is number 70. Pumpkinhead, Werewolf, the TV series Cameron's Closet, Prison. Number 123 with the Ticks cover. Also talks about Tommy Knockers, Jurassic Park. This is number 73, Dead Heat. Also talks about 976 Evil. A Dream Demon, Bad Dreams. Number 172, Species 2, Creature, The Ugly. This is also like, I gotta be honest, the late 90s Fangori magazines, they got ugly in terms of the design. I mean, you look at this compared to like this. It's just so much better. It looks so much cooler. I don't know what happened. I think they changed the font and they changed, like, they made the title bigger or something. It's, and, the, and I mean, the Godzilla thing up here is just fucking obnoxious. There's too many.
too much shit going on. This is number 246. Cry Wolf. Two thirteen talks about some Lucio Fulci connection to Spider Man. What? <laughs> Eight legged freaks, Dagon. This is number two thirty nine. Blade Trinity has the cover. Yeah. This is uh two thirty eight, Seed of Chucky. Two thirty six talks about saw. And then this one is this from nine this is number one eighty. Buffy, the faculty. This is number two fifty two Slither. 245, The Devil's Rejects, has an ad for testing the Crypt on DVD on the back. Number 234, Alien vs. Predator, aka Assholes vs. Penises, gets the cover shot. This is number... 190 Scream 3 Pitch Black Some fucking movie called Generation X I've never fucking heard of <laughs> It's advertised on the back And this is number 240 Constant has a Constantine on the cover And that is my Fangoria collection so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit uh, long on the tooth, but I had a lot of magazines to show you guys. And um, yeah, definitely going to enjoy these magazines and really glad to have them in my possession. And uh, yeah, if you, you ever see any Fangoria magazines in the wild... For a good price, pick them up. Especially if you're a fan of horror. Like, you're going to enjoy them. You're gonna, really going to get a, a lot of enjoyment. And you're going to find them to be a lot of fun. They have great articles. There's a lot of really juicy bits of behind the scenes stuff on films that don't have documentaries or featurettes or stuff like that. And, yeah, it's just a really great magazine and I'm really really glad and I would probably say maybe it's maybe using the word blessed might not be the best word but I in this instance I would say it is I've been blessed with uh, you know the opportunity to have a pretty decent collection of Fangoria magazines so far so yeah Thanks for watching uh, this video, and as always, I will see you later. See ya.